I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and I am uh, interviewing uh, as part of our Meet the Experts film documentary panel, uh, Sarah Dosa, the director of uh, the director of uh, Fire of Love, uh, Matthew Heineman, the director of Retrograde, and Alex Pritz, the director of The Territory. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, this is a uh, uh, big, you're all joining us uh, because you all, uh, all your films made the short list uh, for the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. So first of all, congratulations to all of you on that. And I wanted to uh, uh, know what was your reaction uh, to uh, finding this information out? And I want to start with you, Sarah, because uh, the day that we are recording this, this morning, you got an added amazing uh, uh, bit of news when you found out that you had made the BAFTA long list, not only for documentary, but for Best Director. Congratulations on that. What were these two, what was the finding out the Oscars and finding out about the BAFTAs? What was that like for you? Um, well, thank you so much for, for those congratulations. I, I was thrilled, uh, so profoundly honored. Um, it was a wonderful surprise. So this morning, the BAFTA was an additional surprise. Uh, but yeah, I just feel really grateful uh, to be on this ride and, and that more people are you know, gonna meet Katya and Maurice's work with the film getting more attention. But we work so hard as filmmakers, <laughs> just so, so hard. I still quite honestly, like can't believe we even finished the film in time for Sundance last year. So anything extra just feels surreal and um, really honored to be in the company of Matt and Alex and all the other filmmakers on, on the list. And how about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, I mean, similar, probably just really, really humbled and honored. And uh, it's been an incredible year for docs this year. Um, it's such a like amazing array of, of filmmaking styles. And, and, and I think it's it just shows what a beautiful, malleable form documentaries are. And, and I think, um, yeah, it just was you just look at the range of films that were shortlisted. It's, it's really incredibly impressive. Um, so just yeah, humbled and, and honored to be part of part of that group. And, um, you know, I think we all, it's hard enough to get these films seen. And it just helps us, you know, these films, these small little films to get more eyeballs. So that's great. And how about you, Alex? Yeah, we were, we were like flat out psyched. Um, <laughs> we were so excited. Um, it, yeah, it was, it was great news. Uh, it's been a, a year of festivals and, and great exposure for the film. Like Sarah, I think I was just like so floored to get into Sundance. This is the first film I've, the first feature film I've directed. Um, I've been lucky to shoot on some other amazing films, including Matt's beautiful film, The First Wave. Um, and so for a, a first film of, of mine, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's been great. So um, uh, one of my uh, favorite questions to ask on these panels, I love for, uh, for specifically for documentary filmmakers, I love finding out what were the influences or the things that made you first like get like crack that egg of like, I, this is something I want to do. You know, this you saw something and you're like, yes, that's what I want to do. And so I'm wondering what were the documentaries that had that effect on you? And I want to start with you, Matt. Uh, like early on in my career or in respect to retrograde uh just uh just in general of uh going into documentary filmmaking got it i mean going to documentary filmmaking was never part of my master plan um if i had a master plan i i, I studied history in college um i never took a film class uh and i thought i wanted to be a teacher i i got rejected from teacher america which a lot of people ask they didn't know that was possible but i was one of the the lucky ones who who, who got rejected and um so three of my three of my best friends and i hatched up this idea to drive around the us for three months um we raised some money bought a video camera and interviewed people from mark zuckerberg to drug dealers to cancer researchers and did this kaleidoscopic journey across the us and in doing so um just fell in love with filmmaking uh and and, and taught myself as i went and I'll never forget there's a moment that I, I, I had in, in, in New Orleans three months after Hurricane Katrina, where I walked into the ninth ward with a man who saw his house for the first time after the hurricane. And just what a privilege and what an honor it was to be able to be there for such an intimate moment um, and such an emotional moment. And I just remember sort of having this sort of almost out of body experience and, and, and literally at that time, I was like, I wanna do this for the rest of my life. and that, uh, I guess is what I've done. And uh, what about you, Sarah? 
Um, for me, kind of similar to Matt, uh, filmmaking was never actually in my plan growing up. I thought I was either going to be a professor of cultural anthropology, following in my mother's footsteps, because that, that's what she, she's now retired, but that's what she did, or a nonfiction writer. Um, but my first week of college uh, as an undergraduate, uh, my university had a film series, and I happened to go, and I saw The Graduate, Oh Brother, Where Out Thou, um, and Requiem for a Dream in one week. And I was just like, wow, what is this art form? I just, I hadn't been exposed to cinema in the same way uh, before. And it really opened my eyes to the potential of the craft. And, um, and shortly after, I, I specifically got really excited about documentary kind of um, and, and how it, it brought together my interest in anthropology as well as writing. Uh, and a few documentaries particularly got me excited about that. Um, one of them is Patrizio Guzman's uh, Nostalgia for the Light, which I thought was just such a transcendent and poetic meditation on Chilean history, um, bringing in his own personal voice as well as these uh, incredible characters to illuminate kind of what it means to gaze above at the heavens through this telescope in the Atacama Desert while at once contemplate the, the absolute tragedy of the people who were disappeared in, in the Civil War there. Um, that was just incredible to me how you could make something um, so vast and complex as history also so poetic without the aestheticization um, causing anything to be lost. So that film really had an effect on me, um, as did Agnes Varda's The Gleaners and I, for a totally different reason in terms of how you can be incredibly playful and associative while exploring the, these themes of what it means to tell a story and, and glean from the world around. Um, so I, I could go on and on, but uh, but those, those are just two um, films that come to mind uh, at the moment that had a profound impact on, on this journey that I feel very lucky to be on. And what about you, Alex? Um, the, the one filmmaker that I knew growing up was um, Dan Fung Dennis, who made a beautiful film called Helen Back Again. We grew up in the same small town um, in upstate New York. And uh, he, that, that film made a huge impression on me. It was one of the first films that I was like, you know, wow, holy shit, this feels like a, this feels like a fiction film, but it's also so layered and, and carrying parallel storylines at the same time. The editing was so creative. Um, and so that made a really lasting impression on me. And then uh, other more contemporary films like Minding the Gap really, really resonated with me. I thought like bringing yourself into the story in, in such a delicate way and, and also, you know, telling a story from, from that perspective with people that, you know, you often don't hear from in, in cinema. Uh, I, I loved that film. I love Nostalgia for the Light too. I, it's, it's such such a beautiful film. Um, yeah, long list, but I'll, I'll so, pass it back to you. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I'm always very curious about is, you know, how do you go about finding, you know, these subjects that you end up covering, you know, for some of you, you know, it's several years uh, that take up, you know, several years of your life. How do you, is it, how do these subjects, you know, come about for you uh, where you discover them and, you know, say, okay, this is, I want to start down this path and stick with this and tell this story over the next couple of years. I want to start with you, Alex. Um, for me, you know, I just, I reached out to Nadine. It was kind of old school. Um, I, I just had read about her work, felt really, really inspired by her and, and sent her an email and said, hey, I'd, I'd love to come meet you. I have no idea what this will be. Um, you know, I thought it would maybe be a short film about her work and, and this transition period with a new administration coming into Brazil. Um, but I had done quite a bit of work as a, you know, as a journalist before moving into film. And so have that kind of approach. Um, and I'd also done a lot of work in participatory film, uh, working with lawyers and human rights activists, um, talking about how they can take film and, and incorporate it into their work as, as evidence, but also, you know, sometimes as art. And so that informed a lot of my approach with, with this community and the way that I was thinking about constructing the film itself from those, those really early conversations. And what about you, Sarah? Um, I, I think for me, there, there's a couple of things. Um, you're right that we just commit our lives uh, to these stories. And, and so it has to be a, a very important decision. Um, I have a particular interest in, in films uh, that explore the human relationship with non-human nature. So I'm always looking for, for people who have that kind of lived experience. Um, but no, most notably, I think who, who see the world in a profoundly different way than, than what I've encountered. Uh, my first film was about mushroom hunters, uh, uh, a 
Cambodian man who survived the Khmer Rouge and, and um, a man named Roger, uh, an American man who was a sniper in the Vietnam War. And, and that film tells the story of their relationship uh, over the course of one mushroom hunt in Oregon. Um, but their way of reading the forest taught me so much about ecology and how, uh, as Koi, one of my protagonists says, you have to look above in order to see below. And so I really thought of both of them as teachers of a new kind of way of sight. And that's something that Patty and Marie certainly taught me how to see the earth differently due to their obsession with volcanoes. And my last film this year in the Unseen was literally about a woman who sees spirits of nature <laughs> um, everywhere. So um, that kind of uh, way in the world is, is super important to me. And then I'll, I'll just share one thing that has always stuck with me and been incredibly helpful in making this decision, which is uh, my dear friend and, and former collaborator, Josh Penn, who's a just an epic um, documentary and also fiction producer. He once said that for him, a good test of if he wants to commit to a film is if he would go on a road trip with the main characters. <laughs> and I just love that. It's like, that's actually really helped me to decide some things. Like, would I want to spend hours in the car with these two people? And I've made some decisions actually thinking like, no, like they are really interesting, but I don't think I want to go on a journey with them. And that's helped a lot, but I, I can say that I, I would love to, yeah, I would fly to the, the moon and the stretches of outer space to, to be with Katia and Marie's. How about you, Matthew? It's funny, I have, I have that rule similarly for, for crew that I work with. I have a rule like if, if, you, if you don't want to go to dinner with them, then you probably shouldn't be working with them. So, um, and I totally forgot the question. Can you mind? <laughs> oh, uh, it's, uh, you know, how do you uh, make the choices, you know, make, make your choice about what subject you're going to cover and deciding what you're going to commit, you know, all this time to? I mean, I think it sounds cliche, it is cliche, um, but I think it, for me, the subjects always choose me. Um, and if you, if I look back on all the films that I've done, it's, it's generally trying to take these large amorphous subjects, drug war in Mexico, ISIS in Syria, COVID, end of the war in Afghanistan, and trying to take these issues that are plastered across headlines and we're inundated with stats and information. They're often used as political football in, in Washington or capitals around the world and um, trying to humanize them, trying to put a human face to them, trying to personalize them, trying to make um, audiences be able to relate to them by making character-driven verite docs. And that's that's what I love. That's what I've always been attracted to is is observational filmmaking and, and, and allowing audiences to go on a journey to with people and to places that they otherwise wouldn't get to see or understand. Well, uh, Sarah, uh, Matthew and Alex, uh, thank you so much for joining us for this panel. This has been fantastic. Uh, we wish you all the best over these uh, next couple of weeks as uh, Oscar votes, as Oscar voting is starting. And to all of our viewers, uh, don't forget to go to Gold Derby and make your Oscar predictions and use our Gold Derby app so you can do the same thing. Everyone, thanks so much. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you.